Hey there, sports history fan. This is Arnie Chapman of the Football History Dude Podcast, and I'm stopping by this show real quick to tell you about a couple of cool giveaways that we have going on here at the network. Both are autographed books covering various topics of the NFL. The first is The Point After, How One Resilient Kicker Learned There Is More to Life Than the NFL by ex-NFL kicker Sean Conley. It goes over his unique experience as a walk-on kicker at the University of Pitt after never playing high school football. And then it gets into some of his time playing for NFL teams and so much more beyond the gridiron. The other is from author Kevin Bryant. His book is titled Spies on the Sidelines, the High Stakes World of NFL Espionage. This book started as a curiosity, kind of a passion project to understand everything revolving around well, Spygate. But this put Kevin down a rabbit hole learning about all sorts of espionage that has occurred throughout the history of the NFL. Both permissible <laughs> and often the illicit techniques of gathering intel to try to impact the outcome of the game. To sign up for your chance to win an autographed copy of one of these books, all you gotta do is head over to sportshistorynetwork.com forward slash giveaways and sign up. That's sportshistorynetwork.com forward slash giveaways. Again, check out all the other podcasts that we have in the Sports History Network as well. But now, back to your regularly scheduled journey to the Sports History Timeline. Welcome to Season 2, Episode 7 of One Guy with a Mic, Dingers and Ducks. Took a two-week hiatus, but we're back now. So glad to be back. Turned 40 in that two weeks. Found out that I can't stay up as late as I, or not up, I should say. I can't stay out as late as I used to. You know, turning 40 does that to a guy, apparently. Um, fun fact about July 17th, it's David Hasselhoff's birthday. And also the same day, Joe DiMaggio's 56-game hitting streak ended in Cleveland on a rainy day. And he went 0 for 4, and the cab driver told him he was going to not get a hit that day. He would then go on to hit like for 30-some games afterwards, so he really could have probably had an 87-game hitting streak. Probably one of the uh, best hitters to ever play the game. Just saying. So, not a whole lot other than me turning 40 the last couple weeks. Took a breather here and there, you know, just needed to take a little time, a little relaxation last couple weeks. So, enjoyed that. A little time to yourself does wonders to a person. Uh, today's episode is going to be about a players born or raised in Alaska. Um, the baseball side, not going to be a whole lot spent. Not, I'm not spending a whole lot of time on the baseball side just for the simple fact there's like two dudes that actually played baseball in Alaska. Um, and I'm not really going to count the guys that were born. We're going to talk about them, but I'm not going to go into in-depth detail about the guys that were born in Alaska but then ended up playing elsewhere because a few of them don't even count Alaska as home and just a whole mess but I got a cool did you know that ties into this uh, but before we get into the did you know let's talk about our on this day in sports so we're going to go with August 5th 1921 it was a game between the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Philadelphia Phillies. It also happened to be the first radio broadcast of an MLB game brought to you by KDKA of Pittsburgh that year and Harold Arlen was the first play-by-play -play broadcaster as well. Uh, that's brought to you by onthesday.com where you can definitely go and look for sports uh, you can give them your birthday, and they will definitely uh, send you an email of all the things that happened on your birthday. One more thing I'd like to talk about on August 5th. Uh, August 5th, 1969, Willie Pop Stargell smashed the first and longest home run ever hit out of Dodger Stadium at 506 feet. Because, you know, we love dingers, and we love dunks around here. And then a little quick little basketball one as well. In 2005, the NBA actually announced Las Vegas would host the 2007 All-Star Game. It was the first time an event would be held without us in a withheld in a city, not withheld. Jeez, 
held in a city without an NBA team. I'm getting there, folks. We're getting better at talking, just not real well. <laughs> English apparently is not my type of language. All right, so we're going to start with basketball. Oh, wait, wait, wait. First of all, the did you know? And this kind of this is going to tie in perfectly with our episode. So Aaron Judge, the current home run leader of the Major League Baseball. I think he just smashed like another one today. He's on my fantasy team. You know, only highlight I really got going on in that league. Uh, he actually played baseball one summer in 2011 in the Alaskan Baseball League with the Glacier Pilots. Uh, he hit zero home runs that year, but he hit mammoth blasts in home run in uh, the batting cages or in the uh, yeah in batting practice. Also, Paul Goldschmidt played in the Alaska League as well with the Anchorage Bucks. So there's a little bit of that. Oh, fun fact about the All-Star Game, by the way. I find this awesome. Is We almost had the first immaculate, I'm pretty sure. I mean, I didn't really fact check this before I'm saying it. So someone fact check me out there. Otherwise, I'll fact check myself this week and then correct it next week. Uh, Emmanuel Class A. Through ten pitches with three strikeouts. Now, for all of you based non baseball fans and just here for the basketball stuff, an immaculate inning is when a pitcher throws nine pitches and gets three strikeouts. And Emmanuel Class A on an inside pitch that to Jake Cronenworth probably could have been called a strike in my book. Would have had an immaculate inning at the All Star game, which would have been amazing. All right, now we got the formalities out of the way. Let's get into some info, shall we? A little knowledge. Knowledge is power, baby. And here we go. We're going to start with Alaska basketball because it's produced the most. And it seems like people actually play basketball in Alaska and do things afterwards. They just don't get, or they're born, I shouldn't say people, I shouldn't say people play basketball in Alaska. They do play basketball in Alaska. I should say people that are born in Alaska tend to uh, that play basketball tend to stay there to play basketball where unlike baseball they're born there and then they go elsewhere to play baseball so we're going to start with some international basketball players that they're majorly known for their international play uh, we have some NBA players former NBA, NBA players that played internationally but they're not really I guess one is because Realistically, he played at Duke in ninety in the mid, in the late nineties, and then played three years in the NBA, and then went and played internationally. So he could probably be thrown on the international list as well. But let's get let's get into it, shall we? We're gonna start with Kyle Bailey. Kyle Bailey's from Fairbanks, Alaska. He went undrafted out of Santa Clara in two thousand and five, where he set team records for most games in a career, minutes played. And the single season record for most three points attempted with hundred with 198. Now, all these bro- records have been broken since. You know, it's been 17 years. Obviously, someone's going to break them because records are meant to be broken. Uh, he was all West Coast Conference first team. And although he went undrafted, he did end up moving to Germany and began to play with BG Gutenberg. Gutenberg. I don't know. I'm going to kill the I'm going to really kill these international names just to let you know. Uh he would win MVP of the second basketball North League. I don't know. It's Bunda Bunda Siga, Siga. I don't speak German. I should probably start though. Uh he would play 7 series, 7 years of international basketball and is now an assistant coach in Japan on the Sun Ranchers. B League team. Then you got Damon Bell Hol- um, Holter. He's from Heidelberg, Alaska. He played at Oral Roberts. He went undrafted in 2013 after being named first team All Southland. He played for the main Red Claws of the G League and then went to play in Turkey and Finland and Italy. And then he also coaches youth in the Pacific Northwest now. And gives inspirational speeches about his life that deal with depression, abuse, alcoholism, 
and toxic masculinity. Next up, we have Re- uh, Ramon Harris. And he's from Anchorage, Alaska. Played at Kentucky for four years. And he went undrafted. And then he played in the G League and internationally, most recently in Greek. Or, geez, in Greek. No, in the Greek Basketball League. Okay. All right. So next up, we have probably one of the, I don't know, top three. Yeah, I would say top three international uh, lead decorated basketball players. Four. Top four. Yeah, we'll go four. This is just for the top three for men's. Okay. It is Doran Perkins. He was born in Anchorage, Alaska. Uh, Alaskan. Alaska. And went to Southwestern Oregon Community College from 2001 to 2003. And then he went to play at Santa Clara as well. From 2003 to 2005. He would go undrafted out of college. Because it's Santa Clara apparently. And the only guy that gets drafted is Steve Nash. Um... He would have a successful career at Santa Clara that was that he was given a two-time All-West Coast Conference first team. He was the West Coast Conference All-Tourney team uh, not as well. He was a two-time West Coast Conference leader in steals. Um, he has traveled the world playing basketball in countries from Japan, Germany, Russia, Israel, Italy, Ukraine, China, Greece, Turkey, Iran, and South Korea. He did this all from 2005 to 2018, and he won awards such as the Japanese MVP in 2006, Israel Super League MVP, Israel Super League Defensive Player of the Year. He also was the assist leader in Japan and in Belgium, and also in Belgium, Bel, yeah. And the steel leader in the Belgian league as well, and in Israel. And in Israel, in the Super League, uh, he won a Japanese league championship. He's a two-time Israeli Cup winner. He's an Israeli Super League champion and a Euro League champion as well. And he has been an assistant coach for the Nets after playing. Uh, from 2019 to 2021, and he currently is an assistant coach in Israel. Next up is probably the second most decorated international player on the men's side, and that would be Brad Olson from Fairbanks, Alaska. Well, he was born in Fairbanks, but the cool thing is he went to school at the North Pole High School in North Pole, Alaska. Where every April 24th is Brad Olson Day, boys and girls. Maybe we should get to Alaska for April 24th. I wonder how cold it would be April 24th. Somebody look that up and then shoot me a Twitter what the average temperature of Alaska is in April. Especially April 24th. We might have to make a trip. Brad went undrafted in 2005. After playing three years of basketball at the University of of Alaska Fairbanks where the school went four and 23 the year before he showed up. And then when he played three years at Alaska Fairbanks, they went 64 and 24 with him. He also has a won a record nine player of the weeks in the great Northwest athletic conference as well. He played and then he, also left the school as the all-time leader in scoring. He played his first year professionally for the Dodge City Le- Legion, legend, legion, cheese, legend of the USBL before he moved to Spain to play for five teams from 2005 to 2019, including Barcelona. He was also selected to the men's the Spain men's national team in 2010. After getting citizenship, uh, he won a top of the world MVP, um, or he was MVP of the top of the world tournament. He was a two time Great Northwest Athletic Conference steals leader, scoring leader. He is also player of the year. He also led the, he was also the three point um, made leader in. 2005 
He was a Division II All-American first team. And even in his first year with the Dodge City Legend, he won a championship and was named All-Rookie Team. He also has a Spanish uh, LEB2 championship. And then he has a another Spanish League uh, title, Rising Star Award as well. He's a two-time Spanish League winner. He's a Spain uh, Spain Cup winner and, in 2013 and 2015. And most recently, he played in Greece. Dude scores the buckets is what he does. Next up, we have three former NBA players, or sorry, WNBA players. We're going to go with the ladies, okay? First up is Jessica Moore, born in Fairbanks, Alaska, played for UConn, won two national championships at UConn, and then went on to play seven seasons in the WNBA. Ruth Hebert, Hebert uh, born in Chicago, Illinois, but she was raised in Fairbanks, Alaska, she is a current member of the Chicago Sky and has a WNBA championship and was named three-time Alaska Gatorade Player of the Year. Then you have Kelsey Griffin, who is by far the most decorated woman on this list. Probably the third most decorated basketball player out of Alaska. Born in Anchorage, she went to Nebraska for her college and drafted by the Minnesota Lynx with a third overall pick in 2010. And then was traded to Con- the Nick Connecticut Sun as she was putting her taking posing with her pitcher with the Lynx jersey. She would play four seasons in the WNBA, earning all WNBA rookie team her first year. And then but while she was also playing in the WNBA, she played overseas because that's what the women have to do in order to make money playing basketball is play here and overseas and they make more money overseas than they do here so maybe we should probably crack into that little WNBA cash chain cash machine there and give it to the ladies shall we um where she played in Turkey and they went 23 and 1 and made the championship finals uh she found more success playing in Australia's WNBL League, where she is a four-time champion. She's an MVP. She's a three-time grand final MVP. She was named Defensive Player of the Year. She's a two-time first team, um, two-time all first team, and she earned all second team this year. She is also named the FIBA Asia Cup MVP Award, and her number 23 is retired by the University of Nebraska, because her senior year, she made four different first-team All-Americans list and was named Big 12 Player of the Year all in 2010. Next up, we have three former NBA players. First up is Mario Chalmers, known from his playing days at the Heat and uh, with the Kansas. He was born in Anchorage, Alaska, played at Kansas, where his number 15 is retired. He's a two-time NBA champion with the Heat. He played for the Heat and Grizzlies during his NBA career. He has also played internationally uh, in Bologna and Greece. And he played a season in Puerto Rico as well. And he most recently played for the Sioux Falls Sky Force of the G League in 2000, or, yeah, 2021. Uh, next up, we have Carlos Boozer. He was born in Germany, but was raised in Gr- Juneau, Alaska. He played at Duke, where he was a member of the 2001 NCAA championship team, and was a key member of that team. He went on to play in the NBA for the Cavs, the Jazz, the Bulls, and the Lakers. He would also play his last year of professional ball in China. He won awards at all levels, starting in high school as a McDonald's All-American. He was a third-team All. Uh, he was a third-team All Parade. Parade All-American as well his junior year. And he was a first-team Parade All-American his senior year. In college, he was the all he was the ACC Tourney MVP. He was also a first-team All-ACC along with a third-team All-American. In the NBA, he was a two-time All-Star. He was um, 
he made a All NBA third team, and he was on the All Rookie second team, and he has a gold and a bronze Olympic medal. Now, this guy is probably the most known player from Alaska. It's Trajan Langdon. He was born in Palo Alto, California, but he grew up in Anchorage, Alaska. He set scoring records for the entire state. He was a three-time state player of the year. He won a state title, and he was named McDonald's All-American, where he won the three-point contest. He played basketball, or he also played baseball, and won a state title. And in the championship game, he gave up four hits and struck out 11. At Duke, Langdon was known as the Alaskan Assassin. He set a school record for most three-pointers in a career, and and that was then went on to be broken by J.J. Redick. He played in the 99 NCAA championship game, and with 5.4 seconds left, uh, he was called for traveling thanks to the tenacious defense of Ricky Moore. He played three years with the Cavs after being drafted. Uh, he was also known as the first Alaska Alaskan to play in the NBA. Uh, but his after he played three seasons in the NBA, he went on to play in Europe where he played one year at Italy and then he would try the NBA again and it was cut by the Clippers. Damn you Clippers, always cutting good guys. And so in 2004, he went back overseas. and <clears throat> Where he played eight seasons. Uh, he would play in a Turkey, he would play in a Turkish League Championship. Or he would win a Turkish League Championship. He would win three Russian Cup Championships. He was a six-time Russian uh, champion. Uh, champions, I don't know why. I don't know why they got to do like championship champs. Like, big deal. He so he has got nine titles in Russia. Let's put it that way. Okay, <laughs> he won a Italy Super Cup. He won a, an Italian League champion. He was a two-time Euro League champion. His personal awards include a two-time Euro League fifty forty ninety club. And if you guys don't know what that means, that means it's a he shot fifty percent from field goal range. 40% from three-pointers, and 90% from the line. He was a Russian League Player of the Year, two-time All-Euro League, first team, All-Euro second team, Euro League Final MVP, and a member of the Euro League All-Deco team for 2000 to 2010. He retired in 2011, and he would become a scout for the Spurs in 2015. He would then go on to become an assistant GM, and now he is currently the GM of the New Orleans Pelicans as well. So, now we have your current players. This guy is Deshaun Nix. He was born in Anchorage, Alaska, but he grew up in um, Las Vegas. And he currently plays for the Rockets. Now we have the current member of Hawaii is Kamaka Hepa from... The northernmost city of, I'm going to murder this, Utkiatvik, also known as, formerly known as Borough, Alaska, which happens to be the northernmost city in the United States. He played two seasons uh, in at the Alaska High School there, winning two 3A state titles, and he was also named Alaska Gatorade Player of the Year. Before he moved to play for Portland for more exposure, he was recruited and went to Texas, and then he just recently transferred to the University of Hawaii. Oh, fun fact about Trajan Langdon as well. Trajan Langdon also was not only just the first Alaskan-born player ever to be drafted um, or ever to play an NBA game in 1989, but he was also at the time in 1994, he was the highest drafted player. Uh, a la- player from Alaska in the MLB draft as a pitcher. So that's a little bit of fun fun news. Next up we have an assistant coach. Uh, his name is Mike Dunlap, and he was born in Fairbanks, Alaska in 1957. I think 57 is when Alaska became a state. So, yeah. 
Uh, Dunlap played college ball at L.A. Pierce and also Loyola Marymount. After college, he became an assistant coach for Loyola Marymount. Um, and then he would go on to be an assistant at Iowa for a year before going to USC. After USC, he would be named head coach of Cal Lutheran. Then he would go over to Australia and be a head coach of the Adabade Adda, 36ers of the NBL in Australia. And then he would come back and become head coach of Metro State of Denver, which is a D2 school. He would lead them to two national titles. And he would win two coaches of the years. Uh, he they wouldn't be an assist. He would then go on to be an assistant with the Nuggets, the Arizona Wildcats, the Oregon Ducks, St. John's, and then he'd become head coach of the Charlotte Bobcats for one season, and they went twenty-one and sixty-one. And then he was named head coach of Loyola Marymount from twenty fourteen to twenty twenty, and then he was offered a job with the Bucks to be an assistant, where he has won, where he has been there since twenty twenty. And has an NBA championship, thanks to that as well. So there's all the uh, players, basketball players from Alaska, um, that have made an impact somehow. Now let's get to the list of baseball players, shall we? We have Tony Barnett. Uh, he is uh, from. He was born in Anchorage, Alaska, but played college ball in Washington. Uh, he was best known as a pitcher with the Rangers and the Cubs, and then also with the Tokyo Swallows as well. His last um, appearance was in 2019 for the Chicago Cubs, and he has an 11-19 and record as, or, or his, uh, his Major League Baseball was 11-4 and four with 3.53 ERA, and his... Um, in Nippon ba- professional baseball, record was 11 and 19. He was mostly used as a reliever. All right, next up you have Chad Bentz. Chad Bentz was um, is from Seward, Alaska, and he was actually played baseball at. Um, where he actually played baseball at Douglas High School in Juneau, Alaska, and then would go on to play base, baseball at Cal State uh, University of Long Beach. He played with the Expos and the Marlins and has 40 games played. Uh, he was all. He also became the second pitcher after Jim Abbott to play in major leagues after being born without one of his hands. And a cool fact about Chad Bentz is that he joined the Castleton State College in Castleton, Vermont, and played running back, and appeared in nine games and gained twenty nine yards on twelve cor- on twelve carries and scored twice for one season in twenty ten. So he's one of two Alaskans that actually played baseball in Alaska. Next up is Sean Chacon of Anchorage, Alaska. He was. But he grew up in Greeley, Colorado after he was adopted. And that's where he um, he would play for the Rockies and the Yankees, the Pirates, the Astros, and the Athletics as well. He had a major league record of 45-61 and 61, and his last appearance was for the Astros in 2008. And he made his debut in 2001 with the Rockies. And next after him is Tristan Crawford. Tristan Crawford was born in Anchorage, Alaska, but then moved to um, Australia is where he moved at. And he is a, he signed with the Twins, um, but he is more known for his Australian baseball than he is for his American League baseball as well. He was also on the Australian World Baseball Classic team in 2006 and 2009. <coughs> We have Aaron Cunningham. Um, he was born in Anchorage, Alaska. Went on to play um, baseball elsewhere, obviously. But he did play for four 
uh, Major League Baseball teams. The Diamondbacks, The well, he was drafted by the White Sox, and then he was traded to the Diamondbacks, and then he played for the Athletics and the Padres, the Indians, the Rangers, and then he signed a minor deal with the Cubs and a minor league deal with Arizona. Um, he really only played... He was in their organizations, but really only played in with three teams, the Athletics, the Padres, and in, and Cleveland Guardians. He had a two nineteen batting average and seven home runs with 51 runs batted in for a career. Next up is Randy Kuchar. Uh, he was born in Anchorage, Alaska. And he was a member of two division winning teams and three seasons with the Red Sox in 88 and 90. And when he split outfield duties uh, <clears throat> with the Red Sox behind Mike Greenwell, Ells Burks, and Dwight Evans. In 448 at bats, Kuchar was a 280, 228 hitter with 10 home runs and 40 runs batted in. He played with San Francisco and Boston. Next up is Scott. Lokes, he was born in Anchorage, Alaska in 1956 and went on to play with the Astros and the Pirates. He had ended his career with a 263 batting average, zero home runs, and four runs batted in. He had... He was used mainly as a pinch hitter and a pinch runner and a defensive replacement. Next up is Chris Mabus. Is he was born in? Uh, oh, hey, look at this. So this guy. So he was born in Peoria, Peoria, Illinois, but he attended and played baseball at Soldo, Soldanta High School in Soldanta, Alaska. Then he went on to play Eastern Arizona College in Thatcher, Alaska, or Thatcher, Arizona, and then he went on to play. Ball at Lewis Lewis and Clark State College in Lewiston, Idaho. He was drafted by the Athletics in the 13th round of the 2001 draft. He played his professional season with the Vancouver Canadians in 2001. And then he uh, has spent his last season between AAA River Cats, the Brewers, and AA Hutsville Stars, as well as the Nashville Sounds. His ERA was 21.6, and he had two strikeouts in his lone appearance with the Milwaukee Brewers on May 29th, 2006. Josh Phelps, he was born in Anchorage, Alaska. And he grew played high school ball at Rotherham, Idaho, where he was the team's MVP as a senior and graduated fourth in his class with a 3.94 GPA. He would then be drafted in the 10th round by the Blue Jays as a catcher. He would go on to play with the Blue Jays, Cleveland, Tampa Bay, the Yankees, the Pirates, and the Cardinals. He ended his career with a 273 batting average, 64 home runs, and 244 RBIs. Next up is Daniel Schlerth. He was born in Anchorage, Alaska, and he moved to Highland Ranches, Highlands Ranch, Colorado. Uh, he graduated the school there, and during his senior year, he struck out a school record 19 batters in a single game. He was named to the top 50 all-star players for his, his senior year, and he also played quarterback for the football team and broke the school rushing record in a season season by a QB and had the longest run from scrimmage in school history at 96 yards. He would play three seasons in Major League Baseball, one with Arizona Diamondbacks and two with the Detroit Tigers. And he would finish his career with a 5-6 and six record with a 4.35 ERA and 91 strikeouts. A fun fact is that he was part he was dealt with Max Scherzer as part of a three team trade that brought Ian Kennedy and Edwin Jackson to the Diamondbacks. And also another fun fact is Schlerth gave up Jim Tomey's Jim Tomey's my home six hundredth home run at Comerica Park. 
not like his 600th home run in that park, but his 600th career home run. If he had 600 home runs in Comerica Park just alone, that'd be like some kind of record. Next up is Steve Staggs. Steve Staggs was born in Anchorage, Alaska, and he played for two seasons, played in 72 games with the Toronto Blue Jays um, in the 76 and 77 seasons. And then he played 47 games with the Athletics in the 78 season. Or sorry, no. The 77 season, he played 72 games with the Blue Jays and 47 games with the Athletics in the 78 season. He had a 255 batting average, 94 hits, and 8 triples. Next up is Tom Sullivan. Tom Sullivan was a professional baseball catcher. He played in one game for the 1925 Cincinnati Reds of the Major League Baseball. He was listed at 6 feet 0 inches and 190 pounds. He batted and threw right-handed, and Sullivan was the first person born in Alaska to play in the Major League Baseball. He also would go on to play 55 games with the Seattle Indians of the Pacific Coast League in 1928. And his one Major League appearance was on June 14, 1925, against the Reds when they hosted the Brooklyn Robins at Redland Field, later called Cros- Crosley Field. Sullivan had one place, plate appearance, and that was fa- well, and he faced Dazzy Vance with one out in the ninth inning, and he grounded out to shortstop. To the shortstop. So, in the Cincinnati Enquirer re- uh, referred to him as the big college boy from Seattle. So... But, hey, he's the first, I mean, and Alaska was a territory at that time when he was born in 1906. Uh, He would pass at the young age of 37 in Seattle, Washington. Next up is David Williams. Uh, He was a professional pitcher from Anchorage, Alaska. He played for the Pirates in 2001 and 2005. Cincinnati Reds in 2006. The New York Mets 2006 and 2007. And then he played with the uh, Yokohama Bay Stars in Japan. His major league record was 22-31. and 31. He had a 4.83 RA and 245 strikeouts. He did have 18 starts with the Pirates in 2001. And then finally, the man that does not claim Anchorage, Alaska as his home. A guy that I don't know if should be in his hall, of, it should be in the Hall of Fame or not. To me, he shouldn't be, even if he is a member of the three thousand strikeout club. And his name is Kurt Schilling, ladies and gentlemen, born in Anchorage, Alaska, in nineteen sixty six. He ended up playing high school baseball in Phoenix, Arizona, and attended college in Prescott, Arizona. He was a second round pick. In the January draft <laughs> by the Boston Red Sox. He would then go on to play with the Orioles and the Astros. Chilean was traded to the Philadelphia Phillies for pitcher Jason Grimsley on April 2nd, 1992. After struggling, Chilean was then given a chance to start and pitch for the Phillies in 92. They would go on and make the World Series in 93. He also earned NLCS MVP that year. And he was named to the All-Star team in 97, 98, 99, where he started the 99 game. He was a six-time All-Star in his career. In 2000, uh, all their All-Star appearances included 2001, 2002, 2004. He was a three-time World Series champion. 2001, 2004, and 2007. World Series MVP in 2001, which I really think that should have went to Randy Johnson. Uh, NLS, NLCS MVP of 1993. Won the Roberto Clemente Award in 2001. He was, led the MLB in wins in 01 and 04. He was a two-time NL strikeout leader in 97 and 98. He is a member of the Philadelphia Phillies Wall of Fame and the Boston Red Sox Wall of Fame. He played with the Orioles, the Astros, the Phillies, the Diamondbacks, and the Red Sox. Um, Again, he has 3,000 career strikeouts. Schilling retired with a career postseason record of 11-2. 
Uh, it's the highest. It's a major league record among pitchers with at least 10 decisions. He's a member of a 3,000 strikeout club and has this highest strikeout to walk ratio of any of its inactive members. He is third. Uh, he is tied for third with the most 300 strikeout seasons. Um, I could see you can make a point for that, uh, but this is where I have a problem. If you're going to have that many strikeouts, then you should have some, have some wins, right? Uh, he has 216 wins and 146 losses. He had a career ERA of a 3.46. Struck a lot of the guys out, but gave up some runs. Yeah, he did well in the postseason, but do we give guys postseason awards and put them in the Hall of Fame? But then again, Brett Blylevin and Jim Cotts in the Hall of Fame, so I guess Kurt Schilling should be put there too. Right? Right. He also does not recognize Phil or Alaska as his hometown. He recognizes Pittsburgh as his home na- as his hometown as well. So here's more accomplishments for the the guy that they call uh, Kurt Schilling. He was a Babe Ruth Award winner, two-time Baseball Digest Pitcher of the Year, a Branch Rookie Award winner, Hutch Award winner, Lou Gehrig Memorial Award winner, four times MLB Pitcher of the Month, three-time MLB Player of the Week. He is a Player's Choice Award for the Most Outstanding Pitcher, NL Pitcher. A uh, two-time Sporting News NL Pitcher of the Year. A sportsman of the Year. He was a Sports Illustrated Sports Person of the Year. A World Series MVP, as I mentioned. Um, he has MLB hits per nine innings, pitch leader, leader in 92. Three times NL Game Started Leader. A two-time NL Innings Pitch Leader. Two times NL Strike Leader. A five-time ALNL strikeout to walk ratio leader, a two-time ALNL walks per nine innings pitched, and a two-time MLB winners wins leader. So I guess he could probably be in the Hall of Fame, or should be. Just saying. He relied on a 94 to 98 mile an hour four seam basketball. All right, that's it, boys and girls. There you have it, Alaska baseball and basketball players touched them all not just nba not just mlb we touched them all for alaska the biggest state in landmass the northernmost state as well and i think they were number 49 so but in our books they're number two so all right i'll be back here next week uh, same bat time, same bat channel, as they would say on uh, the 1960s Batman with Adam. Um, yeah. What, what is that guy? Adam. Oh, man, that's going to drive me nuts now. You're all going to, like, be mad at me. So, as always, if you're listening to the first time, thanks for sticking in for the 41 minutes. Uh, Got to hit that follow button, hit the bell to get the reminder when it posts, and... Follow me on Twitter, follow me on TikTok, follow me on Twitch, one guy with a mic. Uh, so, yeah. Oh, merch is going to be coming as well. We're going to figure that out. Uh, you can go to one guy with a mic.com as well now. We've got a website up, and you can go there, and you can figure out where to find me at and where to listen to. And merch link is going to be there as well, eventually, when we get the merch. All right. You all have a safe night. Great evening. Good day. See you all next week. It was just another ordinary day in the offices of the Pittsburgh Guardian newspaper circa 1924. But for Marla Delft, assistant editor, everything was about to change. For she was about to discover the awesome attractiveness of Row 1 brand retro sports paraphernalia items thanks to Orville Mulligan, sports writer. And there it is. Wow, Orville, that's really the bee's knees. Isn't it just? A poster-sized replica of the actual 1909 World Series program cover. I can see that. But where did you get it? And where'd you get it framed? I ordered it from the Row 1 website. 
where over 6,000 items of sports memorabilia from the 1880s to the 1990s are available for reproduction in multiple sizes and in several different materials, with over a dozen styles of frame to choose from for prints like this. Well, I'm sure Mr. Delft would love to put up more of these in the office. But I'm equally as sure they're beyond this newspaper's budget. <laughs> Not at all, my dear Marla. See for yourself. Go to sportshistorynetwork.com slash row one. Sportshistorynetwork.com slash row one. Oh my, these are good prices. Oh, and look at this stuff. Oklahoma, Nebraska football. College basketball art. Michael Jordan items. And so Retro it was that Marla Delt discovered the spondiferous magic of Row 1 Sports Memorabilia Arts and Prints. You can, too, by visiting sportshistorynetwork.com slash row one. That's R-O-W number one today for access to the full Row 1 catalog of gallery prints and gifts like t-shirts, long sleeve shirts, telephone cases, coffee mugs, blankets, pillows, towels, and even shower curtains. Act today for a 15% discount off all prints with coupon code SHN15 and 20% off all other items with coupon code SHN20 at checkout. And keep your dial locked to the Sports History Network for the exciting chronicles of the 1920 sports world in Orville Mulligan, Sports Writer, coming soon. Okay,